Just weeks ago, on October 21st, a SR-22 tail number 42 Bravo Echo went down approximately 9.45 a.m. just south of Ruston Regional Airport. Regrettably, the pilot, the sole occupant on board, sustained fatal injuries. This devastating accident truly hits home for us here at COPA, as the pilot involved was scheduled to attend our pilot proficiency program set for the following week in Fort Worth, Texas. The NTSB has published its preliminary report. The flight had departed Huntsville, Texas at 8.30 a.m. and was cleared for the GPS runway 36 to Ruston Regional. However, a critical navigational error appears to have initiated a chain of events that tragically culminated in the loss of the aircraft and the pilot. For a deeper dive into the sequence of events and the factors under investigation, let's bring in Dean of Aviation Safety, Mark Wydell. Mark? Thanks, Chuck. The NTSB coded this accident as a navigational error followed by controlled flight into terrain. The aircraft failed to capture the glide path for the instrument approach. After the pilot advised ATC he was going missed, he was unable to hold the aircraft on the assigned heading and altitude. He crashed about two minutes later. This is a reconstruction in Flystow using ADSB data from ADSB Exchange. Air traffic control cleared the airplane for the Yarnav runway 36 approach with the pilot acknowledged, but shortly thereafter the pilot requested a go around. The controller cleared the pilot to climb, maintain 2,000 feet, and to turn right to a heading of 120 degrees. The controller asked the pilot if the visibility or ceilings were too low, and the pilot responded that he was having, quote, a little trouble with my autopilot there getting that programmed in, end quote. The controller subsequently asked the pilot to verify the airplane's heading and provided a low altitude alert. The controller then again asked the pilot to verify the heading and asked the pilot if he was flying using the autopilot or hand flying. The pilot responded that he was hand flying the airplane. There were no further communications received from the pilot. The navigational error occurred while the pilot was attempting to fly the RNAV approach. This is the instrument approach chart. Zooming in, we can see that the approach uses a 3-degree glide path that crosses the final approach fix at 2,200 feet. The aircraft was about 200 feet below the glide path when it crossed the final approach fix. It was also fast and likely had not been configured for the approach nor trimmed to normal approach speed. This descent profile shows where the aircraft subsequently flew through the glide path without intercepting it. It subsequently began descending, and then about two miles from the runway, the aircraft began to climb. The pilot seemed to be behind the airplane and likely forgot to arm the autopilot to capture the glide path. His concentration on reprogramming the autopilot appeared to distract him from flying the airplane. The NTSB coded this crash as a controlled flight into terrain, but it is obvious that the pilot could not control heading or altitude while flying by hand. The autopilot was apparently a distraction. He would not be the first to fail to properly set up the autopilot for an instrument approach, but he needed to step down in automation here and simply establish straight and level flight. In other words, maintain control first and foremost, and only then turn attention to reprogramming the autopilot for another approach attempt. Spatial disorientation might have also been a factor. Ceiling and visibility were both dropping at the time of the accident. These flight conditions can produce illusions. Instrument pilots are trained to rely on their instruments to maintain control rather than use visual cues, but there is an inherent danger of developing spatial disorientation 
when flying in these conditions with an obscured horizon. Once this starts happening, the pilot has very little time to take corrective action. While we want pilots to train regularly so that they can maintain their hand flying skills in instrument conditions, we also need to give them tools so that when they make mistakes such as happened in this accident, they don't need to pay for those with their lives. The aircraft had a digital autopilot with an electronic stability and protection system. In addition, the autopilot controller has a blue level button circled here. Once engaged, the autopilot will roll the aircraft wings level and pitch to the horizon to aid the pilot in re-establishing straight and level flight. Further, the aircraft was equipped with the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System, or CAPS. For our safety stand down, we simulate spatial disorientation to demonstrate use of the blue level button when pilots are unable to quickly recover on their own. This is uh, in an SR-22 G6 with Perspective Plus. The aircraft was rolled into a simulated graveyard spiral and we can see that as the roll exceeds 45 degrees, ESP becomes active and the roll bars pull the plane back within 30 degrees of bank. However, ESP alone does not recover the aircraft to straighten level flight and the roll bars just go back to 45 again. As this progresses, the nose is dropped and the sink rate's already over 3,000 feet a minute. Pilot pressing the blue level button, you can see level level on the autopilot scoreboard, immediately recovers the aircraft to straighten level flight. To learn more about this feature, look at the free preview available on the Cirrus Approach website. This is an excerpt that picks up after reviewing the manual hand flying recovery technique. Commit the recovery steps to memory and practice them with a CSIP on a regular basis. If you're unable to recover by hand without what I'd call almost immediate success, then press that blue level button and give the autopilot a chance to recover for you. Because especially if you're disoriented, the situation could be more complex then you have time and altitude to realize. So if after pressing the level button, you don't see the instruments almost immediately start to slow down and stabilize, well then pull caps immediately. It's your ultimate backup and that's what it's there for. Waiting will only allow the loss of control situation more time to mature. Unusual attitude recovery should be practiced regularly. Again, Commit the recovery steps to memory and practice with a Sierra standardized instructor pilot on a regular basis. If unable to promptly recover by hand, press the blue level button and give your autopilot the chance to recover for you. But if you don't see the instruments immediately begin to slow down and stabilize, pull the caps handle. Remember, if it doesn't work to push blue, pull red. Back to you, Chuck. Thanks, Mark. While it's far too soon to definitively state the precise cause of this accident, sadly, this accident profile has been observed before. We can confirm that the 65-year-old private pilot was fully instrument rated. The aircraft involved, a Cirrus SR-22 Generation 3 model, equipped with advanced Garmin Perspective Avionics. This sophisticated suite includes both electronic stability protection and the crucial auto level blue button designed to assist the pilot in recovering from unusual attitudes. Furthermore, as is standard with all Cirrus aircraft, this plane was outfitted with CAPS, the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System, the ultimate last line of defense. The agonizing fact of this accident is that ADSB data indicates the pilot was fighting for control of the aircraft for over two minutes yet Neither the caps nor the blue level button, critical tools available for immediate use, were deployed. At our CPPP training events, we rigorously stress the need for recurrent training on early recognition of spatial disorientation, the use of both the blue level button, and the deployment of caps. The simple mantra we share with all Cirrus pilots is a critical one. If it doesn't work to push blue, pull red. 
If you're interested in joining the Cirrus Owners and Pilots Association or learning more about free Cirrus Embark training, Cirrus Direct Training, or the CPPP, we have put links in the description. I look forward to seeing you on the forums, or better yet, at the next CPPP. I'm Chuck Calley, and this has been First Takes.